Okay, so as John mentioned, just a little kind of overview, um, we were globally but started in the UK um, and our business is foundation is all around communications connectivity and how do we deliver that in a resilient way um, and we integrate connectivity solutions into many different um, applications ranging from um, fire appliances right up to mobile command and control units um, for a really diverse market um, that could be fire that can be civil defense um, that could be the um, ambulance that could be police drones obviously or UAVs um, have been a hot topic for many years and, and we've very much been involved um, with UAVs right at their cusp and we don't build UAV technology um, but we work with the many um, providers and we work with many services who ultimately are starting or, or already use UAVs to support with, with, with their applications um, around civil, uh, around situational awareness. What we find when we're working with, with drone operators or we're working with um, organisations is they may require a particular UAV, you know, is it thermal imaging camera technology? Do they want a tethered solution, for example? The type of UAV doesn't really matter to us. Um, what we find when they are trying to deploy these solutions is they have a number of challenges which the drone itself doesn't quite address. And that's where we have come in um, to support them with, with, a, with a few things, actually, we start to look at um, beyond the pilot operation. So how do we use this technology to support within their operational environment? Um, taking response, just as an example, um, because that's the one we're more, more fundamentally involved in, um, we have had to look at this from a, a perspective that there might be multiple drones being used different technologies for different types of operations in some cases and, and michael said it actually um, in his presentation not everybody has access um, to be able to fly a drone themselves so what we find in the uk is um, there are drone operations teams and they become a shared resource for different types of um, incidents or responses so they can be used for pre-planned events so things like um, the NATO summit, the things like the, the G7, for example, um, you know, protest environments, right through to what's happening within police operations, a, miss, a missing persons, a complex type of incident. And when you've got this scenario where lots of people need access to that video and that information, the next question is, how do we deliver that and how do we deliver that reliably across many different types of, of um, environments? So going from an urban environment to a rural environment. So the first thing that we needed to address was um, how do we take this footage beyond the pilot and, and make this really simple to stream this information to any authorised location? So we ourselves have, have developed alongside um, our many customers and, and many drone operators, very simply a UAV streaming box. It's rugged, it's in a pelly case, it's self-powered, you take it anywhere you want to, um, it's what you see here. But built into this at a very baseline on the basis that, you know, if 4G or if cellular connectivity is available, is a dual SIM modem. And we populate things with dual SIM modems for a number of reasons. One, we can offer um, multi-roaming um, cellular streaming. So we have the ability to put a SIM card in there that can stream across any of the major networks. And we do that on a, on a European and a global um, level as well. Um, so you're not tied to, to one network. You are able to go on to what is the best performing network and the one that is available um, to you. But, and I'll go on to it later and show you some examples, we've also got the ability to scale up. So plug and play other types of connectivity solutions 
to this so that when cellular is not available or is congested because of the nature of the event, we can automatically switch on to different types of communication barriers. But we build this all into one unit. And then we started to look at the user groups, the fact that it's never just one person that is involved in managing an incident. Um, and therefore, how do we get this stream out to the decision makers, the people that need to be involved in the incident? So we ourselves have um, what's called an extreme um, video management system. Um, it's actually managed um, within our dual um, enhanced resilience satellite networks, the data centers, which we, we also host our satellite services from. Um, so we're providing this very reliable ecosystem where this hosted video platform can sit into it. And on its own, it can work and we can stream that to any mobile device that's connected on uh, via the internet or to any headquarters or to mobile command and control vehicles. But we've also got the ability to integrate that into other types of third party software um, solutions. So in the UK, many of our services already use um, mapping based solutions, logging based solutions. So they might use command and software uh, command and control software applications where they are bringing in multiple feeds, they're recording what's going on. And this platform works really, really well with integrating into our customer's own kind of um, provision. Um, you can see here, this is, this is a really simple um, dashboard management interface and keeping this really simple was, was, was one of the core things for our, our customers. They don't want complex uh, complexity. So the box is very simple. It's a plug and play unit. You take that feed from the drone controller and then all of a sudden this box can show you what that, that drone operator can see. And we can start to encode the stream and more importantly, manage that stream over the available bandwidth because sometimes it's a case of managing the connectivity that is available. So you can profile and select which profile you use right up to HD. But if HD, you know, you can't do that because the, the GSM or the cellular connectivity is not quite there, you can reduce the frame rate of this to get this through. Um, we also were asked to start looking at user group management. Um, so the ability to configure and preset um, user group settings. So if it was a multi-agency type incident, the ability for police, fire and ambulance to receive this stream. And therefore, it's a very simple, um, we can pre-configure that at the, the kind of build stage. And then you simply just press secure stream and this video is, is going anywhere um, to those authorised locations. Here you'll see it um, on, a, on, on, on the setting you would see as if you're at your desktop. You'll also see by this image um, some command vehicles actually um, that we sometimes do start to integrate this into. So in, in its own, it is, a, it is a standalone solution that can go out with anybody, um, but usually as an incident scales up, um, we are bringing these feeds into command and control vehicles. Um, the vehicles that we are building can be, um, you know, they look like mobile offices on wheels. They have operational areas. They have command room functions. Um, they are built in with um, dedicated satellite communications as well as private um, LTE um, networks that can be deployed and the drones, the, the UAV streaming solution can be connected to. So in that moment that you don't have GSM, you can simply plug and play to a vehicle or a deployable solution that also has things like satellite and resilience communication networks in order to get that information to where it needs to be. So for us, as you can see by this image here, it is all about taking that, that video, that, that information beyond the pilot and doing it in a really secure manner, but one that is flexible to meet the different needs. Um, you know, some of our customers that we work with, we, we work across kind of wildfires. This has been tested um, in those scenarios. And 
one of the, the biggest challenges we have found talking globally um, to, to those involved with wildfires is, is the sheer scale of those types of incidents, how dynamic they become, and actually how do you manage the communication and how do you how do you set something up? So making something as deployable as possible, as flexible as possible, and the ability to con connect over multiple networks um, was the key when, when, when we're working with our clients and delivering this. You'll see in the top right hand corner, this is one of our um, um, this is one of our Middle East customers actually. Um, and it's Hamad Medical, um, and they are preparing for the World Cup. Um, so we are quite instrumental with, with, with the World Cup. Um, they have over 250 um, ambulances that um, are designed with a, a scaled down 4G um, capability. Um, they've got two large command and control centers, but they are using drone technology. They're also using other video formats as well, which is quite important because on an operational side of things we are bringing in multiple video streams um, and plugging and playing so the drone operator and the drone feed is, is one aspect that people want but we also want to bring in you know what's going on the ground from a body worn camera perspective what might be going on from um, you know mast mounted or rapid deploy um, camera perspectives but also looking at um, existing infrastructure that, that might exist within um, town centres to so the normal CCTV operations. Um, and again, with that kind of that video management system, it's the ability to plumb all of these different feeds together and really give everybody, you know, a full operational overview of what's going on in order to make, make those decisions. Um, and those technologies are delivered in the same manner we do with the UAV streaming technology. You'll see in this image here, we've got the drone. We will have dedicated vehicles. So here is a Ford Ranger. Um, we use it as one of our demonstration vehicles, but throughout the UK, um, we do have teams that have dedicated vehicles for their drone teams um, for deployment. And um, more and more now with the way that co co connectivity is changing, um, they are starting to embed both cellular and satellite communications into these vehicles. So this vehicle itself, um, you can't see it because it's embedded into the roof, is something called a flat panel satellite, which is connecting to the LEO and MEO satellite constellations, which are coming into play now. Um, for those of you that, that aren't very au fait with satellite, um, the world of connectivity is changing and we're seeing a huge convergence of comms coming together um, because of other types of applications. So if we start to look at autonomous vehicles of the future um, and we start to look at getting global ubiquitous connectivity, the way in which we see that being delivered by working with you know, people like the European Space Agency, for example, um, and, and many others, is we are starting to see for the first time in very consumer-based applications and, and more commercial-based applications, the need to deliver hybrid connectivity. Um, and that will become a blend of satellite um, and um, 4G and 5G um, and, you know, whatever G <laughs> comes after that going forward. But because of the sheer amount of data that we're starting to plumb through, through the networks, how do we do that securely? How do we manage this? How do we have this always on um, capability? Um, we're already delivering that in, in, a, in a manner, so to speak, so that you don't need to worry what you're connected to. You just need to know that you have a guaranteed internet connection um, and it will be delivered one way or another um, to support the type of data. I think as we move forward, um, the term hybrid connectivity as a service is coming into play um, because of um, the sheer scale of, of how much real-time data people want. You know, that could be in telemedicine, um, for example, um, you know, managing care pathways, the ability to deliver um, things remotely and not necessarily have to um, convey patients, for example, to hospital. So again, looking at this mix of 
you know, how can we use drones to deliver capability remotely to the field? How can we utilize connectivity? How do we manage this data going across? The only way in which to deliver that is going to be through a hybrid connectivity platform, which is already available today. Um, but most of our customers will look at a scalable model. So the box that can go out, you know, with somebody in, a, in the back of a vehicle can be deployed out into a field. But having that kind of backhaul, that resilient backhaul, when and as you require it, is becoming, is becoming more critical as we go forward. And then towards the back in this picture, you'll see a very large, what is a, a you know, known as a command and control vehicle with the, the kind of satellite that points up to the sky. Um, and, and these tend to come out later. This is for protracted incidents. This is for, um, you know, uh, longer term incidents or getting wheeled out where there are no, there is no communications infrastructure at all. And actually it's a, box on wheels is the best and most simplest way to describe it that is bringing along a completely private network um, in which your teams can connect to and deliver that that very real and very critical information um, into the hands of the operators these are some of the deployable solutions so you'll see here these guys are actually flying um, a UAV here and again you've got the command and control vehicle in the back but you've also got portable units in which you know this is the portable um, cellular network so you're not relying on on your your normal terrestrial sim cards they have literally given themselves a private 4G network and they can backhaul that information um, um, via satellite if, if they need to so we we are very used to mixing um, technologies to support our customers and their and their needs. So there's there's usually some fundamental things. There's the connectivity and how do we de de deal with that? How do we deliver that across? You know, usually connectivity challenged areas, or in some cases because of the nature of the incident, the mobile infrastructure is just simply congested. So how do we give priority to the operation? in delivering, delivering that network. And, and the truth is there are many solutions out there um, that can support, um, can support you. And when we're working with our customers, as I said, you know, we're a systems integrator by nature um, with this connectivity bias to us. So we're usually designing solutions or designing things to overcome a problem. Um, that that exists and building that into very simple to operate platforms. And that is me done, but happy if, if anyone's got any questions um, or if anyone wants to pick up on anything, happy to help and have more of a discussion around it.